Tuscaloosa TV presents in 3, 2, 1. Dateline Schools with your host, Terry Harrington. All this week on Dateline Schools, we're visiting Port Huron Schools and learning more about a decision the community is about to make come this spring. And to tell us more about it, my special guest is the superintendent here in Port Huron Schools, Jamie Kane. And, and Jamie, when people go to the polls in May in Port Huron, they actually have two decisions really to make. Tell us about that and, and why two in this particular proposal. Sure, sure. And so what we did was we brought a steering committee together in August of 2015. And that steering committee was made up of parents, of business leaders, students, teachers, board members, really a, a broad cross section of our community. And they really studied and looked at the vision that we've set as a district. And they determined how will we go about creating that vision in reality and what do we need in our facilities to make that happen and so when they came um, down to it they looked at factors and feedback from a variety of sources one of them was an independently um, commissioned uh, survey process done by an outside entity that canvassed over 300 community members and we also had two specific community engagement sessions in the community and in the strong robust feedback that we received from the community was that their financial tolerance uh, if the ask was appropriate would be just north of a hundred million dollars and so when the steering committee looked at all of the needs we have in the district uh, they really came and felt up with the number was about 150 million Okay, and so the question became one ballot question for 150 million, or do we give our taxpayers an opportunity to have some choice here and do a two ballot proposal question? And the committee really went back and forth about that and ultimately kind of said to me as superintendent, what do you think? And, and we looked at all the data behind that and ultimately said, you know what, we want to be um, sensitive to the financial threshold of our community members. So we went with two questions. The first question um, gives our community a chance to really address the bulk of our immediate needs. The second question will address needs that we have that will we will put into place a few years down the road. So proposal one is all about our immediate needs. Proposal two is about those needs that we will so certainly have as in the organization, but that we'll be able to use those dollars for to meet at a later time. Do both proposals have to pass, or how, how is that piece going to work? Right. So really, voters are able to say no to everything. Certainly, they can say yes to everything, which is what we're hopeful for, because we really believe what we're asking our community for. Uh, but two cannot stand on its own. One can. So I think an important thing to say is if someone you know, wanted to vote yes for Proposal 2, it would not pass and would not be funded. Proposal 1, if it is is voted yes, it would stand on its own and would be funded. We'll be back with more tomorrow. For Dateline Schools, I'm Terry Harrington.